Welcome. Welcome everybody to today's webcast, which we are recording for the benefit um, of those who registered but perhaps couldn't attend today. I'm Mary Jane Petrowski, the ACRL Associate Director, and I'll be presenting today with Gina Parsons-Diamond, who is our ACRL Program Officer for Benchmark and Project Outcome. Um, I'd also like to thank and acknowledge the members of the ACRL Academic Library Trends and Statistics Survey Editorial Board, many of whom are attending today's presentation and who have done so much over the years um, to support our data collection efforts. Um, they'll also be um, providing support this year for survey respondents who have questions about the survey. We're gonna keep the presentation fairly short to allow time for your questions um, um, at various points uh, in the presentation, as well as the end. We will monitor the chat, so you are welcome to post questions there as well. So uh, just to kind of uh, set the stage, um, we launched our new data service benchmark uh, late last month with the goal of providing enhanced access to um, the ACRL annual survey data back to 1998. Uh, we're gonna give you a guided tour today. And before we kick things off, I do want to acknowledge and thank the thousands of academic libraries in the United States who have contributed, to, contributed their data faithfully to ACRL over these many years. Um, your contributions to the profession have made Benchmark possible. Here's our agenda, and I want to reassure you that we will have plenty of time for questions and comments at the end. Um, we're going to talk briefly about the survey. Some of you may be new to that. Uh, it's a key part of this whole project. Um, Gina's going to show you how Benchmark works, and then I will come back to um, an exciting piece of the platform, which is our data dashboards, and show you um, how those look and what they're based on. So um, again, to set the stage, for the past several years, ACRL has been working with our sister association, the Public Library Association, to develop this new platform that would allow both associations to field surveys as well as to provide access to the data uh, we both collect uh, in a timely manner. This tool is designed to help academic libraries across the country use the survey data for benchmarking, for understanding trends, for advocating for better resources, assessment projects, and I would say even conducting um, individual research. Um, with Benchmark, you can analyze expenditures, staffing, collections, services, and of course, the other trend data. Um, you can analyze the other trend data over time using customized comparison groups. Okay, just a few words about the annual survey. Um, our 2021 survey is currently in the field, and it is closing at the end of February 2022. Um, you might wonder, why is this the data collection period? Um, there is no perfect data collection period, but, <clears throat> excuse me, since 2015, we have aligned our data collection with that of IPEDS, which is the Integrated Post-Secondary Education Data System, because their academic library component is part of our survey. So last year, we had more than 1,650 academic libraries contribute their data for a healthy 52.1 response rate. And we are hoping, we are hoping even more libraries will contribute this year. Um, the survey is the largest national survey of its kind. <clears throat> and we think, we like to think that it offers the best understanding of the impact that academic libraries have um, through their staffing, their teaching, their collections, and more. Um, I think it's important for you to know that the survey questions are shaped by respondents from every size and type of academic libraries. 
And we do count on your participation to ensure the broadest possible picture of academic libraries. We also welcome your input on changes to the survey and suggested focus areas for next year's trends questionnaire. Um, and we do give all survey participants space to provide comments and suggestions for changes um, as we go forward. Um, we endeavor to make the survey results available quickly, typically three months after the survey closes. So just kind of a broad level overview of the survey. I know some of you um, take a deep breath every year when you approach this project. Um, but for those of you that are new, um, I want to remind everybody that the oversight what I call the intellectual oversight for the annual survey is provided by the ACRL Academic Library Trends and Statistics Survey Editorial Board. And there are three sections, the first being the IPEDS Academic Library component. We include all of those questions. Um, you might not know that every institution of higher education receiving federal funding must respond to this 1500 item iPad survey. It's a huge survey. The academic library component is a small part of it. But our survey replicates every library question required by iPads. We give you the same instructions and the same definitions. And whenever iPads makes changes to this part of the survey, we do likewise. So when you complete this uh, section of our survey, you can download these responses and uh, send the spreadsheet to your institutional key holder. If that happens to be you, you can easily upload that file directly into the iPad survey. So that's the first part. The second part of the survey is what I call um, National Center for Education Statistics Academic Library Survey leftovers. So when the migration occurred in 2015, the um, IPEDS Academic Library Survey, which was fielded by the government from 2000 to 2012, a lot of those questions were left on the cutting room floor. And so the, the editorial board has pulled in those questions um, into our survey because they are important. And then we do add from time to time um, new questions based on um, survey feedback. The final part of the survey is what we call the trends or the current topics. Um, so the questions uh, in this area are intended to have a low burden of response. Yes, no, choose all that apply, that kind of thing. Um, and we develop uh, this questionnaire based on your feedback. So this year's trends will focus on changes in library instruction and group presentations in, way, in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic. Again, at the end of the survey, a crucial piece uh, is your feedback on how we might clarify instructions, new areas of focus in the trends. A lot of people ask us, you know, what's in it for us? Why should I participate? Um, we know it represents a contribution of time and effort. Um, but I'll remind everybody that as you probably know all too well, libraries face stiff competition on our campuses for funding and in these times of limited resources, more and more academic libraries have to include data uh, in to justify their funding and program requests. What you might not know is that the ALA Washington office turns to ACRL usually on short notice whenever they need data um, to support and to advocate for academic libraries. Um, so we do make use of your data in that way. Again, our survey is open. Some of you here may not have received an invitation to participate, so please contact us at acrlbenchmark at ala.org, and we will get that information over to you. Um, one of 
the big pieces of this project is trying to keep a current uh, list of contacts for the 4,500 libraries we reach out to in our universe, but we don't catch every turnover at the director level. So please send us your staff updates at any time and we'll be glad to make those changes. So I'm gonna stop here briefly to see if there are any questions about the annual survey before I turn it over to Gina to show you how to use Benchmark. Mary Jane, we've gotten a few questions, so I'll just read them out to you. Sure. Um, we have, I recall being able to pull ACRL metrics reports during the collection period. Is that no longer supported? My understanding is, and I'm going to rely on Gina a little bit here, but when you complete the 20 21 survey, you should see your prior year responses displaying. But um, if you need your prior year responses, if you email us at ACRL Benchmark, we can send those over to you. And I also wanted to say um, the ability to pull reports for 2020 and all previous years is still available at any point. We just won't load in the finalized 2021 data until about three months after the survey closes. Um, another question from Scott Lanning. Does Benchmark include basic institutional information like FTE, university budget, et cetera? Yes, we do ask you to report your FTE headcount. It's one of the um, later questions in the survey. And we ask for that so we can calculate some key ratios like um, ratio of librarians to FTE or um, ratio of reference transactions to um, student enrollment. So we do collect that. Um, and when it as it becomes available from iPads, we do pull in the um, uh, the data that's reported for academic library support so that you can see what percentage of the lot of library expenditures, how that compares with the overall expenditures for um, um, in the academic support arena. Okay, um, we got one question which I can answer, which is when did the survey invitation go out? It did go out um, about two weeks ago. We are having some problems with our emails going to your spam folder. So if you haven't received your login information yet, please just email us at acrlbenchmark at ala.org and we will get your login information to you right away. Um, I think that's it and we're ready to move on to looking at the toolkit. I'm going to talk about using Benchmark. Using Benchmark is easy. Um, you can use it to analyze expenditures, staffing, and other trends data over time using customized peer groups if you're a subscriber. Um, we also provide some key ratios for you so you can get a snapshot of what you're looking for. You'll be able to use it to quickly generate key metrics for things like self-studies, budget justifications, if you're involved in the reaccreditation process, annual reports, and more. You'll also be able to use the visualizations to illustrate ongoing activities and usage in an engaging and compelling way. Um, you'll have easy access to these dynamic charts and graphs so you can see your data in new ways and make more strategic decisions. So how it works is we provide a series of interactive visualizations for peer comparison or benchmarking, which can help your libraries better understand their performance and support everyday decision-making. These visualizations are easy to use um, and they can be, if you're a subscriber, they can be filtered by Carnegie classification, country, state survey year and custom peer group. You're also able to drill down into the underlying data for each visualization and get the raw numbers out. Currently, Benchmark has two user types. Um, all academic libraries have access to the toolkit where they can view and complete surveys as well as review past survey responses. 
All academic libraries will also be able to view a summary page with key uh, metrics and visualizations selected. So no matter um, if you subscribe or not, you'll be able to get that high level data. Um, if you choose to subscribe, subscribers get all of that plus access to a robust set of interactive dashboards with filters, a custom report builder, and the ability to create custom peer groups. So you can access um, Benchmark at librarybenchmark.org. You can log in using your iPads ID. And if you don't have an iPads ID or you haven't gotten your login information, you can just email us at librarybenchmark at ala.org and we will help you out. This is the home page that everybody will see upon logging into Benchmark. Here we have an example of two of the summary visualizations, which are pre um, presented with your library's information, which you'll see in purple, the average and the median. And Mary Jane, could you remind me, are these national averages or are they Carnegie classification averages? These are national averages, assuming no filters have been applied. Yes. So the default is, is everybody. So if you're an American school, these are the national averages. So you can just get a quick um, comparison of how you're doing compared to the nation. Up at the top, you'll also see where you can go, um, if you're a subscriber, to see your detailed survey metrics dashboards, an option to purchase a subscription, and then the ability to um, view your surveys. Accessing the surveys is easy. Once you're logged in, just click on the survey tab. There, you'll be able to see any open or in progress surveys that you're working on. Um, this is also where you can access your historical data under the closed survey header. So if you've ever completed an ACRL annual survey in the past, that data will be stored here for you. Um, the next tab that's available to everybody is the Manage Institution tab. This is where you can view and update contacts for your library under Manage Institution Contacts and where you confirm that your library details are correct. If your library has moved addresses or your school has changed Carnegie classifications, please just get in touch with us so we can update our system. Next, we have the resources tab. Um, all user types have access to the resources. This is where you will find the survey instructions and worksheets for the current year as well as tutorials and resources on how to use the dashboards and other helpful links. And these will be updated periodically. Um, the final tab that's available that is not the survey metrics dashboard is the manage peer groups tab. And this is for subscribers only. Um, subscribers can create their custom peer groups and then any peer group that is created in the system will be available as a filter on the detail dashboards. Um, you can search for individual institutions when you're creating a peer group and select whoever um, you view as a peer, or you can search by city, state, country, or Carnegie classification. Um, for more information on creating peer groups, you can visit our creating peer groups tutorial on the resources page. Um, and I'm going to pause for questions. I see a few came in. Um, Anne asks, are the survey results available on an ACRL website so any library can see? Is there a charge? Um, the survey results in summary form are available on the homepage of Benchmark, which all libraries can view. If you want to get into the details of the survey responses, you will have to purchase a subscription to Benchmark. Um, Leah Horton asks, what is a subscriber? Um, we'll get to the subscriber types in a moment, but it is an institution that is paying for Benchmark access. Let's see. 
Lisa Dietz asks, how do we know what our academic library's login is? Um, please just email us, Lisa, and we'll get you your login information. Um, Susan Foran asks, will our ACRL metrics subscription roll over to benchmark? Yes. Yes, it will. Um, Mary Jane, this is the one, uh, one for you. How frequently do the summary statistics changed? I noticed that your screenshot does not match the averages on mine when I'm logged in. Um, how to answer that? Um, I might need a little more detail. Um, but just to say, with reference to the summary data, it is by default showing um, our most recent data, which would be the 2020. Um, and typically, we would update um, the data would def would default to the most recent data once a year, whenever we upload the most, for example, the 20. 21 data in June of 2022. Um, it should be updated. But we have been doing a little bit of testing and changing. So maybe, um, maybe what you're seeing um, might just be a result of some back and forth we've had with our developer. And I will say all of the screenshots that you'll see in this presentation are from a test account that we have. Um, which may not be reflecting um, accurate data since we're not a real academic library institution in the test account. Thank you, Gina. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Teresa Arndt says, are, are all the instructions for past surveys also available? The definitions have changed over the years. Need these if looking at historical data so you don't make false comparisons. We currently only have the 2021 survey instructions available in benchmark. We can certainly add, we have all of the prior um, instructions and we can certainly make those available um, in the resources tab. So thank you for the suggestion. Um, Kathleen Bell asks, who has subscriptions? Um, a subscription is available for purchase. Um, if you had previously subscribed to ACRL metrics, your subscription has been successfully transferred to Benchmark. If you're interested in purchasing a subscription, we'll be getting into that a little bit later in the presentation. Gina, let me also mention that if you are a current ACRL metric subscriber and did not receive the notice we sent all of the subscribers that the migration had occurred, please reach out to us at ACRL Benchmark at ala.org and we will um, send your login and password information. Um, MF asks, what kinds of reports can you get from the peer review function? Um, we're gonna go into the detailed dashboards in just a moment. So if you still have questions after that, please just let us know in the chat. Um, Laura asks, is the subscription the same price for all libraries or are there different prices based on school size? We will get into pricing at the end of the presentation. Pat Culpepper asks, Mary Jane, one for you, is benchmark distinct from counting opinions LibPass? In the past, if we had a subscription to LibPass, we had access to the ACRL data. Thank you for that question. We are currently working with Counting Opinions because they would like to license our data because I know for a number of consortia groups, they have built special portals. And so we are working on licensing terms right now so that you can continue to have, um, so that you can continue to use the portal um, along with the ACRL data. Um, Sarah has a question about the trends questions. Sarah, if you could email this to us, we'll have the editorial board look into it for you. 
Um, Elizabeth asks, is there an easy way to look at averages based on Carnegie classification? Yes. If you become a uh, benchmark subscriber, you'll be able to filter all the data by Carnegie classification, as well as a few other fields, and we'll get into that in a moment. Linda Miller asks, Mary Jane, is this still hosted by Counting Opinions? And Charles has a similar question. Does this mean a serial metrics is going away? Right, we have migrated um, off of the ACRL metrics platform onto the benchmark platform. So um, the answer is it is no longer hosted by um, counting opinions. Thank you everyone for these excellent questions. We're gonna move on to looking at the survey metrics dashboards. Um, please continue to pop your questions into the chat and we will get to them after this section. Thanks so much. Thank you, Gina. So we'll switch gears a little bit, perhaps get to the, the meat of the presentation, uh, which I wanna preface by saying, I know many of you um, are familiar and use the ACRL standards for libraries and higher education uh, as a template for conducting self studies, um, strategic planning and other types of assessment. So we We have used uh, this standard, if you will, to think about um, How we present the visualization. So all of the dashboards correspond to the eight principles that you see here um, that are part of the standards for libraries and higher education. Um, the reasoning behind that is that we wanted subscribers um, to be able to easily use the data to demonstrate their contributions to advancing the institutional mission, position, libraries as leaders in assessment and continuous improvement uh, on their campuses. So um, what I'm showing you now is a screenshot um, of the dashboard uh, tab area. And across the top, um, you can see the, the eight principles in addition to summary and report data. So basically you can choose any tab and see the charts that are associated with each dashboard. And then you can continue to filter if you wish by broad Carnegie classification, detail Carnegie classification, year country, and of course, I think the ever popular peer group. Um, I think most people use this, uh, it, uh, the peer group as the key filter, but there are many other filters that, um, that you might want to make use of. So what we're gonna show you in our time today is just a few examples from the education tab. And this is the tab that speaks to the educational role of the library. So this is where we have brought together the survey metrics um, that relate to this educational role and speak to that educational role. So this is the tab where you will find metrics on such things as total attendance at presentations, the number of synchronous and asynchronous presentations, and key ratios such as librarians to student FTE, um, ratio of reference transactions and consultations to student FTE. And we've also pulled in any relevant trends data, which in this case would be the 2018 library contributions to student success initiatives. So let's take a, a closer look at some of the education dashboards. So here we're looking at total attendance at all presentations to groups. And this is just one of many dashboards in this tab. So basically it's showing you how your library compares to other academic libraries. And the dashboard calculates the mean value for all libraries, um, which you have chosen for comparison purposes. But if you haven't chosen to filter anything, if you apply no filters, the default display literally includes all libraries that responded um, 
uh, to the most recent survey, which in this case is 2020. So um, most of you I know will want to go in and um, filter that by your Carnegie class or your detailed Carnegie class or uh, your peer groups. Now here's the dashboard. Um, again, it doesn't look too different from the previous one, but here is, I wanted to show you that we do pull in the calculated ratios. This is a very popular one um, that looks at student enrollment to FTE librarians. And then finally, just to give you a flavor, um, I've collected a few of the dashboards um, that you'll see that are based on the 2018 trends survey, uh, library contributions to student success. So that particular uh, survey had questions on top library contributions to student success, top student outcomes assessed by libraries, and again, institutional high impact practices as defined by the National Survey of Student Engagement. I just want to jump in here and say real quick that when you're looking at these visualizations, they will be dynamic based on the filters you select. So if you select your Carnegie classification, the charts will dynamically change. And then if you decide to look at them from a peer group, it's really easy to filter the data in various different ways and see quick visualizations based on your filters. Thank you, Gina. And last but not least, I just wanted to point out that the dashboard area will allow you to create tables that are based on specific survey questions and or combination of survey questions. So uh, for today's presentation, I just chose to create a report showing how many weeks libraries were closed in 2020 um, due to COVID-19. And I applied no filters. I wanted to see, uh, I was just curious as to how long um, um, libraries might have been closed. So your report will look like this. Um, I've chosen to display them in descending order. Um, and this is showing simply the number of weeks each library reported being closed in FY20 because of COVID-19. So you can see here uh, the data displays in a tabular format and can be exported as an Excel file. So Gina, I think I'm going to turn it back over to you so you can talk about subscriptions. We've gotten a few questions. Oh, um, sure. So we'll pause and take those. Um, Anne told us that uh, gateway counts are difficult in her library because of uh, the building houses other services and she needs a definition. And uh, the definitions are available in the 2021 survey instructions in the resources tab. And if you're still lacking clarity after you read the instructions, please send us a note so that we can pass your comment along to the editorial board. Amy asks, will the benchmark question numbers stay the same, stay the same as they were in ACRL metrics? Yes, the question numbers are the same. Greg says, interesting that time series graphs are presented from right to left, the opposite of what is conventional. We did this for a user friendliness from a user friendliness perspective, since our data goes back to 1998, you'd have to scroll a long way to the right to get the most current year's data. And we found that people are more interested in current rather than historic data. Um, Kathleen says the dashboards look really great. One issue I see is that we report all branch libraries, but when we're advocating, we don't advocate for all of our branch libraries together. It would be helpful if we could report branches separately and have a way to include or exclude those in peer groups. Yes, Kathleen, I suggest you send us an email. This seems like a tricky issue that we'd be happy to help you out with. Let me jump in and say conversely, um, I know that there are some schools, and I'll use Claremont 
colleges is an example where one library serves um, six or seven schools. And so um, if you, and that's a case where we would want all of the children <laughs> um, to have their, their data point to the, the parent, which is, is the library that serves all groups. So um, we are happy to work on um, these kinds of parent-child relationships. Um, just email us and we will um, get them sorted for you. Thank you, Mary Jane. David Brennan asks, can a live dashboard be created without needing a login, i.e. could I make one for my admins to have access on demand? Um, so David, if the way the logins work is there's one login per library or institution. So um, Currently, you cannot access the dashboards without logging in. This is definitely something we could think about making in the future as kind of an embeddable um, dashboard. But currently, you do need to be logged in to view the dashboards. Laura asks, are you able to compare your own data from year to year? Yes, all of your historic data is available to you. And if you would like to make it easy to find your own data in the system, if you're a subscriber, I suggest you make a peer group of one that is just your own institution, and then you'll be easily able to compare your numbers from year to year. Greg Hello. asks, can the years that are presented in a graph be filtered to a recent range? Yes, one of the filters is survey year now i'm questioning myself but yes i think you should be able to filter the data just by the years you want to look at kelly jacoba asks i would love to use some of these graphs but have trouble downloading or printing um, currently the easiest way to get the graphs out of the system is to take a screenshot or a snip with them this is something that we'll be looking to improve in the future. And Gina, I'd also like to jump in quickly and say, um, if you would like to contribute your data for past years, maybe there was a staff turnover and you missed a year reporting, but you have the data and you would like to um, have it included in Benchmark, we can work with you to um, get your data transferred. And additionally, um, I know in the past we've had libraries that wanted to correct data that was previously submitted. And we also um, are happy to do that as well. Thank you, Mary Jane. Um, I think that's all the questions for now. I'm gonna go ahead and talk about subscriptions, but of course, if anything comes up, please just pop it in the chat box. All right, um, so we offer three different subscription types for Benchmark. The first is for an individual academic library. Um, these are handled on the institutional level. So if you have multiple libraries at your institution, you can use a, have a single subscription. The cost is $600 a year. Um, we do offer two discounts. 10% if you are an ACRL organizational member, and 10% if you complete the most recent survey. And those can be stacked. So if you're a member and a survey participant, you can get 20% off. Um, our second subscription type is consortium or group. Um, consortia or other groups may purchase a subscription um, that instantly provides access for up to 10 libraries at the $3,000 rate. And then it's $200 for each additional library in your consortium or group. And if you join as a consortium or group, we will work to get that group set up as a peer group for all of your members so that they can easily compare themselves to the others in the consortium. Our final subscription type is corporate. Um, this is for companies or other non-academic library organizations. The cost for this 
subscription is 1800 a year. And um, if this corporation or company or organization is an ACRL member, they get the 10% discount as well. Um, you can subscribe and learn more about Benchmark on our website, which I'll just pop into the chat here. Um, I did see a few questions come in. Um, oh, so Kathleen said they tried to create a peer group of one. This is two institutions have to be added. Apologies for that. We're still trying to figure out our new system. Um, because the data is displayed year by year, it should still be pretty easy to compare your historical data to your current data. So if you have any additional questions, don't hesitate to reach out. Mary Jane, I think this might be a question for you. Shamiana, apologies if I'm saying that incorrectly, asks, are there any resources or groups that help with identifying your peers? And do we have access to the contacts for libraries that participate? Um, hi. Um, well, this is a really interesting question. Um, uh, institutions that complete the IPED survey um, are asked to identify peer groups at the institutional level. So my first suggestion would be to reach out um, to perhaps your institutional key holder for IPEDs um, or um, maybe your your um, your registrar or admissions office, because this is the group that will definitely know um, what your peer group is, what your aspirational peer group is. They will give you that list. Um, I know some schools have as many as three or four different types of peer groups, but this is the one um, using, using that peer group is probably the one you really want to use because it carries the most weight when you are making um, budget justifications or looking at yourself with respect to peers. Um, so IPEDS um, does ask institutions to define a peer group. Um, so it should be available there. Whether or not that is the same set of peer groups that your admissions office uses, um, uh, I don't know if it would be the same. But my recommendation would maybe be to start with the registrar or the admissions office. Thank you, Mary Jane. Kathy Hill asks, when do these rates start? Um, they do start right now. Um, and your subscription is annual. So from the date you subscribe, you'll get 365 days of access. And I do want to remind everybody that if you do have a current subscription that that started <laughs> uh, with ACRL metrics, your subscription has just been transferred over and we will send you renewal notices closer to, um, you know, the expiration of your current subscription. So anyone who is a current subscriber, you can just um, you can just start using the tool now for okay. the balance of your subscription period. Thank you. Elizabeth Brown asks, how would we know if we're an organizational member of ACRL? Um, your library leadership would probably know, um, but if you're unsure, you can always reach out to us and we can confirm your organizational membership for you. Michael asks, are we able to export all data as a Excel file? Yes, if you are a subscriber, you can export all of your data through the report, but you can export all data through the report function. You're also, it, all users are also able to um, get their survey data as well. Um, Kristen asks, ACRL metrics had a filter that allowed us to limit on a high low value based on what our library data says for a particular question. 
Is that functionality still available? That is not currently a filter in Benchmark, but we will keep it in consideration as we move forward with the tool. Um, Jane, I see you have a question about the specific survey questions. Um, that would be best to email emailed to us because we probably will have to consult with the editorial board. Megan Hodge asks, how does benchmark overlap with or diverge from project outcome? So project outcome is a tool designed for libraries to use with their patrons. So we provide a set of surveys in project outcome that libraries can administer to their students or anyone else using the library. And um, the questions are really outcome focused and designed to be used at an individual librarian class or project level. Benchmark is um, more designed at the library level. So the benchmark survey is designed for library leadership to fill out. It's a lot of kind of hard data like gate counts and collection counts. And it's designed for libraries to compare with other libraries where benchmark is designed for libraries to improve services for their patrons. Do you have anything to add to that, Mary Jane? No, Gina, that, that was a very clear explanation. Uh, Laura asks, what is the best way to ask questions about the survey? Please just email us at acrlbenchmark.org. Um, we will be able to answer your question or we'll pass it along to an editorial board member who will get back to you. And let me just jump in and say um, that I, I want to thank everyone who, um, uh, who has looked at the tool initially or looked at the thing and sent us comments and suggestions. We really appreciate the feedback. Um, because there are still a few things we are are tweaking, and um, uh, we we appreciate all the um, the extra sets of eyes. Thank you. I'm just looking. Um, Elizabeth Brown asks if there will be invoices created for subscription renewals. Yes, um, you'll that will um, you'll receive an invoice two months before your, your first invoice, two months before your subscription expires. Let's see. Beth Miller asks, is there a way to see the questions answers submitted on a specific survey question in a type of FAQ format so that we may all learn together? Or is there already an FAQ tab? Beth, I'm not quite sure. Gina, I can answer oh, this. Perfect. <laughs> Um, or at least I think I can, under the resources tab, um, you'll be able to download a copy of the instructions for the survey. So when you get to the end of that document, there's a separate kind of FAQ. Um, we could certainly break that out and make the FAQ a separate document, but we've made it kind of part and parcel. Um, the editorial board is um, considering taking a look at the instructions and um, again, trying to make them as user friendly as, as possible. So if, if there is a preference, we can certainly break out the FAQ as a separate document. That's easy to do. We also provide you, because I know in large libraries that it, it takes a village to respond to the survey. We've made um, the spreadsheet, the we put the, the survey questions into a spreadsheet so you can collect the data across the library and then um, input that data uh, online when you've got everything sorted. Thank you, Mary Jane. And thank you all so much for attending. We still have a few minutes. So if you have any questions, we'll be available for the next couple minutes. Otherwise, thank you so much for coming. 
We appreciate everyone's enthusiasm for this new tool and are excited to see um, where it can go in the future. Oh, and it looks like Devin, who is the editorial board chair, has just popped an answer into the chat. Thank you so much, Devin. And thank you to everybody for coming. If you need anything at all about the new tool, please don't hesitate to get in touch. We're excited to work with you um, on this new project. Mary Jane, do you have any last words? No, again, I just want to extend my appreciation to everyone who is who has contributed or is thinking of contributed to the contributing to this year's survey. Um, I, I just cannot underscore enough um, how valuable your data is and um, it really allows ACRL as an association to fulfill one of its key, um, key missions, which is to collect and make data available to the field. And um, each and every school is important and counts. So um, we're thanking you in advance for the, the work you'll, you'll do uh, to contribute your data this year.